Well, it's good to be here again tonight. Those were wonderful testimonies. Uh, I was asking my wife, man, I just wish there was some way I could go to the trip, but the Lord did not work it out because we're doing the deputation right now and, and all that. But, boy, that's a wonderful thing. Great to hear that God blessed in a miraculous way. And that's what you expect. We serve a great God, and so it's uh, just wonderful when he shows his hand. I'd like for you to turn to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, please. I know it's, uh, the time is already passing by. I will not hold you late tonight. But I'd like to get a few things across from the Word of God. How many of you have problems in your life? Would you raise your hand? All right, you can put your hand down. How, how many of you have uh, physical problems in your life? Can you put your hand up? Okay, you can put your hands down. Um, how many of you have made mistakes spiritually? Can you put your hand up? Okay, you can put your hands down. Again, that was a, a wonderful group of testimonies that we heard and what the Lord did. But the chances of everyone in that group serving the Lord many years from now is not that good. And the reasons for that is because good people quit. So I'd like to preach tonight for just a few minutes why good people quit. Let's read here in Numbers chapter 14. If you'd stand with me. We'll begin reading with verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Word of God. And we'd ask, Holy Spirit, that you'd speak to us out of the Word of God tonight. I pray that you'd use my voice and speak to the hearts of men, that they would be uh, firm in their decision to serve you. Lord, I know that the devil is uh, lurking about and looking for whom he may devour. And so I'd ask, Lord, that you'd please help us tonight to get what it is that you have for us in our Christian lives to make us better servants for thee. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. In the history in chapter 14, the children of Israel are at a point of decision, specifically what they're going to do about the giants in their path known as the children of Anak. Also living there were the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the land of the Mosquito Bites. <laughs> they said with a loud voice and tears flowing, the land of Egypt is better than this. They said, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to the world because it's better to do that than fall by the hand of the Lord. The Bible says here in verse 3, uh, to fall by the sword. You know what the sword of the Spirit is? Amen, the Word of God. You know, we have Christians that they say, hey, things were better than in my old life before I was saved than now when I'm a Christian and I have to follow the Word of God. We had better do it the way that God said we should do it if we plan on making it out of this thing alive. What happened? They did it their way instead of God's way. They quit on God. Every one of them in the crowd died, and none of them made it to the promised land. When I say good people in the preaching tonight, I'm referring to people that are engaged in the battle for Christ, people that are actually doing something, including prayer. This is not a message about rebels and those that don't care about spiritual matters. 
But often we, as believers, we know of our great God, but we get sidetracked or we get discouraged, and we entertain thoughts of quitting. I remember when I played organized football for the first time. Uh, the football coach called me and told me that you're on such and such a team and uh, we'll meet at this house for a meeting and, and we'll give out the equipment and so forth and so on. And I hung up the phone and I'm so, I was so excited. And my dad said, who, who called you? I don't know. Where, where do you have to go for the meeting? I don't know. I was so excited. I didn't know anything the guy said other than I was on the Browns. <laughs> I was on the Browns football team, and my dad said, ooh, that's, that's Coach Nubby. Uh, Nubby, he was uh, demanding, hard-nosed, rough, disciplined, dominating, yelling, cussing, intimidating, 300-plus pound coach. And my dad said, he's going to make you want to quit. I kind of laughed, said, not me. I love football too much to quit. About four weeks later, I went in to see my dad with tears in my eyes. Dad, I want to quit. <laughs> but he wouldn't let me quit. Thank the Lord for that. And I'm thankful that uh, he raised a boy that's not a quitter. But there are many people that quit, good people. A lot of people quit their, their uh, jobs here in the church and different things for many, many reasons. They quit on God, they quit on family, they quit on their duties, they quit their church jobs, they quit on their marriage, they quit on school, they quit their work. We're living in a nation full of quitters. Oh, Brother Yoder, don't call me a quitter. I love the Lord. It's like a guy was up uh, out soul winning one time and saw a guy on the porch. He had a bottle of beer in one hand. Uh, a, a tray full of cigarettes here, uh, rock and roll music going, and uh, he said, don't tell me I don't love the Lord. I said, I want to tell you, you don't love the Lord. I say something wrong? <laughs> hey, I want to tell you, if you were doing something here in this church, if you had a job to do, if you were encouraging people, if, if you were uh, soul winning, if you were running a Sunday school class, if you were in the choir, if you were doing something and you're not doing it here anymore, unless the Lord specifically took you out of that job, you quit on God. The sad thing is we have that that's filtered down into our families. We quit on our children. We quit on our wives. We, we are quitters. Let me give you some reasons why good people quit in their spiritual life. Number one, people quit because they forget what they've been saved from. You see, Israel had a captain. His name was the Lord of hosts. Back in Exodus chapter 17, verse 15, the Bible calls him Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. In James chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Regardless of your background, in the end, you've been saved from a lot. You've been saved from hell. Amen. I mentioned this morning, I haven't worried about going to hell since I was four years old. Why? Because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, not Dave Yoder. I've been saved from the jaws of sin that bring enslavement, which turns no joy and causes loss of hope in our lives. The jaws of sin and lying and cheating and disobedience. A defeated Christian life. Then it goes from the jaws of sin to the marks of sin. Tattoos and body piercing and ruined livers and stomach and brain and a rotten attitude and a trashed memory and all those things. I don't have that on me. Why? Because I didn't follow down the path of sin. Hey, if you have those things, I'm not yelling at you tonight. But what I'm saying is, you don't want that for other people, certainly. There's been times in our life where we've been one step away, like the Bible says about David, we were one step from disaster. And if you would have quit, it's, it's hard telling what your life might be. You know why Brother Yoder isn't going to be the next drunk? I'm not going to be the next drunk because I'm not going to take the first drink. 
You might be the next person enslaved to pornography. You might be the next person that loses reward because you become a lazy couch potato and you don't want to do anything anymore for the cause of Christ. These things become reality in our life when we forget where the dear Lord Jesus saved us from. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19, please. 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, we'll have to hurry now. Verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take me away, away my life that I am no better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, rise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a, a cake baking on the coals and a cruise, not Philemon cruise, but a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. You see, uh, uh, number one, people quit. Good people quit. They quit their spiritual life because they forget where they came from. But number two, Good people quit when they get tired physically. You see, in chapter 18 and verse 19, Elijah had just killed 850 people that were working for the devil. But you see, he got tired. The Bible tells us in chapter 18, the last verse, verse 46, and the hand of the Lord was on uh, Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He, he ran faster than Ahab's chariot. So he's killed all these people. Now he outruns a chariot and he's worn out and he's tired. You know, Vince Lombardi, the winning Super Bowl coach for the Green Bay Packers, said, Weariness makes cowards of us all. The angel told him in verse 7, the journey is too great for thee. The angel said, you're tired. You're overdoing it. Get some physical strength. You people that just came back from the missions trip, get some rest. Why? Because your physical condition is, cooked, is connected to the way you think in your attitude, in your heart. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And pretty soon after you've come back from this missions trip in great victory, you'll end up in discouragement. Why? Because you're worn out. Get some rest. God has an order for all things and a principle in the Bible for all things. But people, they like to throw you off course. You know, they'll, they'll say something like, uh, can a person outgive God? Well, technically, no, you can't. I mean, uh, can you pay for all the air that you breathe? No, you can't. Um, can, you, can you pay for keeping yourself from every single disease that's out there? And there's a zillion diseases out there that you could get if your body goes haywire. But most of the time what they mean is uh, give more money. You know, God has an order for all things. But if you stay in God's order, then you can't outgive God. Okay? Well, the same thing here. God has an order in your physical life. And if you can't keep your eyes open, you need to get some rest. If you're hurting and you're in pain, God's trying to tell you something. He's not trying to tell you, you didn't read your Bible this morning. He, he's trying to tell you, listen, I've got plans for your life and I'm allowing this to happen, so pay attention to what I'm doing in your life. But you see, people don't do that. And other people try to help, you know, but they, they don't, only the person that knows your situation between you and God is you and God. So don't get upset at another person when they're trying to help you. But don't get ahead of God. 
A Christian life is a, is a life of order and balance. You know, I, I've, been in, I've been in the ministry for 20 years now, and I've seen a lot of people called, uh, we call them firecracker Christians. Man, they get saved. You know how a firecracker is. You light it. <laughs> boom! And that's the end of them. You know, the Holy Spirit lights your flame and, and you get all excited and man, you want to win the world to Christ and you're going uh, soul winning three days a week. You're at every service and you last about six weeks and that's it. And we need somebody that's in this for the duration. I'm in it for the long haul. How about you? And I want to tell you, you may be zealous for our Savior, but you're not more zealous than Elijah was. And God told him, before you quit, before you tell everybody you want to die, before you want to cease your spiritual life, get some rest. Maybe you just need some re-energizing. I have an aunt that used to work in the school cafeteria. And she'd see the, the absence list, and she'd say, well, the reason this guy's out is he just ate too many hot dogs. <laughs> You know, we've got to take care of ourselves. 1 Kings chapter 19, let's look at verse 10. And he said, I have been very ze- jealous for the Lord God of hosts, and for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Verse 14 And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I, uh, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So he's mentioned the same thing twice. He's dead set on this. Number three, good people quit because they think they're the only one going through it. But verse 18 reveals the truth. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. You see, the the natural feeling is to be like you're all by yourself. But you know, when you are sanctified, set apart unto God, and you live a separated life, you know what you're going to feel like? You're going to feel like you're separated and alone. That's why the word is separated. Are you with me? Amen? Okay. A couple of you are still awake. I haven't put you all to sleep yet. And so we learn that, that God has pulled us apart unto Him for a reason, and we've got to overcome these feelings by the truth of the matter. We are not alone. First of all, if you're saved, you always have the Holy Spirit with you wherever you go. I see Brother Manuel back there, and he's a a hard-working man. And sometimes he probably feels like, well, isn't anybody going to help? I'm doing all this alone. And maybe sometimes he is. But you see, it's never that way in the Christian life. Fred, when you're at your job, you are never there alone. The Holy Spirit's always with you. Trust God's Word, and don't let the psychology work against you. You are not alone. I know people on the other side of the world right now that are facing the same problems that we're facing. They're facing money problems. They're facing sickness problems. They're facing marriage problems. They're facing uh, opposition against, against the government. We are not alone in this thing. Don't let that make you quit. Every once in a while, now not every weekend, every once in a while it's good to visit a church that has the same doctrine as we have, the same standards that we have uh, in a different state that's bigger than ours. Why? Because you get to see with your eyes, hey, there's other people out there that are doing what we're doing. It helps you realize you're not alone in the Christian battle. Please turn to Proverbs chapter 23. 
Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So some people quit because they believe they're the only ones out there. But number four, good people quit because they've been thinking about quitting for a while. You say, how could this person quit on God? Well, how could they quit? The same reason that anybody quits, because time, the flesh, and pressures of life got to them. You see, it may be a surprise to you or to others, but it's not a surprise to the person. Quitters consider quitting a long time before they actually quit. Normally, people will not make a split decision against a whole way of life if there's no previous thoughts that have been er introduced into the mind. You, you look at the story of the prodigal son. He had things nice at home. He was subject to his father. But he had a place to stay. He had uh, uh, things to drink, meat to eat. It, it was a good place to be. And so the next thing we read about is he goes into his dad and says, Give me everything that's mine. I'm leaving. Why did he leave? Because he left a long time ago up here before he packed up and left. We have to guard against thinking about wrong things. Be careful about what is introduced into your mind. Uh, kids, when your parents tell you, hey, get away from that, then get away from that. Why? Because you're going to expose yourself to needless sin and it causes wrong thinking. In addition, we as Christians, we should not make provision for failure. Yes, we cannot live a perfect life. Yes, we will fall and stumble. But we don't make provisions for failure. Why? Because when we're following our captain, victory is sure. So don't make provisions for failure. Why? Because if you do, then you're going to start planning for it. When people counsel with me uh, concerning things about marriage, sometimes, well, many times they'll say, well, you know, if this thing doesn't work out, then what? And my answer is, well, we'll talk about that if that time comes. But right now we're going to trust Christ. I'm not going to give them a plan for plan B. Do not entertain thoughts of sin, for the Bible says the thoughts of foolishness are sin. Hey, from time to time, everybody thinks about quitting. Why? Because we're in a battle. Nobody, nobody likes to see friends of a lifetime get hurt spiritually and gone and back into the world. Nobody likes to see when their children fall to the devil and mess up. Nobody likes these kinds of things, but it happens, and it's meant to get to you. So, but I'm telling you tonight on the authority of God's word, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Tu no de has. Job chapter 1. Please turn to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young man, and they are dead. And I on only am escaped alone to tell thee. Chapter 2, verse 7. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the soul of his foot unto his crowns. And it goes on there and tells, tells some more about that. But then his wife comes along and says, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? You see, good people quit because loved ones suffer. 
Remember, we must obey God's word because we can't see the whole picture of life. Some of you that have had sin, or not, excuse me, that have had sickness come upon you, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Why would God allow that in your life? The answer is, I don't know. And, and, and good people suffer. And Mrs. Job here, she was upset, not because she was mad at Job, but she did not understand why God would let him suffer that way. You know, we, we all think it's wonderful to be an example for the Lord, and we say, boy, we should be such a good example. Satan ought to be able to go to God and say, have you considered my servant? And put your name in there. But then when we go through it, we whine the whole time. Quitting on God may seem like a reasonable and logical alternative, but quitting on God is never right. I hate to see people hurting and in pain, yet God allows it. I hate pain and sickness, but I would rather have it put on me than somebody that I love. But it doesn't work that way. I don't get to decide who gets the pain. I don't get to decide who gets sick. God determines that. But I want to be honest with you tonight. When that happens in my life, I think, why would God do that? Certainly, he loves them too. But you've got to be careful. Because if you take that thing too far, and instead of uh, praising God and uplifting his name, you start thinking, why should I serve a God like that? And you get all messed up. Let's, let's take this story here in the book of Job and reverse the roles. What if Mrs. Job had received the physical torture and the bad news that her husband did? She would have blown her testimony, she would have died, and she would have brought the glory to nobody except maybe Job because he would have been allowed to get remarried. <laughs> but you see, God knew what was best, and God did it his way. And now we read about it, and it brings strength to us because we know that we haven't gone through near what Job went through. We must be careful of foolish talking and foolish thinking when loved ones around us are hurting. Why? Because it will cause us to quit. We don't have time to go there, but in, in Jonah chapter 3, you read the story about Jonah and how his ministry ended. You see, good people quit because they don't get the results that they want. Jonah wanted Nineveh destroyed. Why? Because they were, uh, they were Israel's arch enemies at the time. That's like uh, praying for us that all the Muslim people would get saved. You see, God promises, he, he doesn't just threaten, he promises that those that turn against him and become idol-worshiping nations, that God is going to judge them. And so if they start all getting right and, and get saved, where is the judgment coming? It's coming back to the USA. This is, this is what happened to Jonah. He didn't want the nation of Nineveh to get right, but God told him, you go and preach to them. And he had to spend some time in Whale University, but he got things right, and so people start getting saved right and left. And in fact, Jonah had the biggest revival any, of anybody preaching to a heathen nation in the Old Testament. And when it, they finally got done, Jonah was mad about the whole thing because he didn't get what Jonah wanted. And so he quit. We will be judged according to our works when we get to heaven. But we will be judged according to whether we did it his way or whether we did it our way. Because if, if we've done it our way, when it's judged by fire, it won't come out as silver and gold and precious jewels.
You know, in the book of Judges and in Jeremiah and Matthew and Corinthians, the nations continued to do it their way. But you see, we are what the Bible calls a peculiar people. This is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Amen. And when we start making this our home, and we start getting our eyes on things that are out of our control, and we don't get the results that we want, we want to quit. Hey, let me ask you, teenager. If your mom and do, dad do what is wrong, and you know what is right to do, what path are you going to follow? Well, I'm in their house. I have to do what they told, tell me to. Amen. But you're not going to be that age forever. You're going to get your opportunity. And I'm encouraging now, encouraging you now, do not quit on God. Last, good people quit because their life doesn't turn out the way that they thought it would be. You see, the Christian life is real. R but unfortunately, there's a lot of real people that make decisions based on fantasy. And over time, in the pressures of life, they realize that it really isn't that way. It, most of you know my testimony. I was saved when I was four years old. I grew up in a Christian home. We went to church Sunday morning, Sunday evening, uh, Wednesday. Uh, a lot of times my family went to visitation. If there was any special activities, we went to those kinds of things. When I got married, I married a wonderful Christian lady. We got married in a Baptist church out there in Colorado. But we continued to serve the Lord year after year after year. I've been in the ministry 20 years, but I want to tell you with all honesty tonight, there's things that have happened in my life, and I cannot believe that they happened to me. How could I be following in the footsteps of our Savior, and yet these things have come, come upon me? Why has this happened to my family? Why has this happened to my uh, uh, marriage? Why has this happened in my church? Why, 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 why? And it does not turn out the way that I think that it should. Because these things are real. We're in a battle. You know, we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ, and we are, but you know, everybody in the family doesn't get along. Are, are you going to quit because you're upset with another brother? Are, are you going to quit because some sister didn't give you a hug? Not you, sir, I mean another lady. Hey, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you tonight, you better do this or you better do that. What I'm telling you is, hey, be careful. Open your eyes to what's happening spiritually. I, 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 back where we started in Moses' day, they said it was better if we'd have gone back to Egypt. Wait a minute now. You were slaves and you worked for a God hater and you didn't control anything in your life and now you're upset because somebody doesn't see things your way. And it's better that you go back to Egypt. You better be careful. You better be careful. Last, give you, let me give you some reasons why you shouldn't quit. And I only have three of them. Number one, and you can look this up later in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 5 through 7. It's still that same story concerning Elijah. Don't quit because you have a God who individually cares about you. You know, you have a lot of problems in your life, and so do I. But God really does care about you. The key to that is when Elijah got victory, he immediately humbled himself. We have a tendency to do it the other way. When we get victory, we brag about the good things that we've done. Don't do that. Why? Because when Elijah needed the help, then God delivered. Number two, don't quit 
because Jesus didn't quit. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. We said, number one, don't quit because God individually cares about you. You know, these so-called other religions that have gods, their gods don't care about them at all. Number two, don't quit because Jesus didn't quit. It says here in chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Grandma, who thought we thought was a great Christian. No, it doesn't say that. Let's, let's try that again, verse 2. Looking under the preacher who knows how to do it right. No, it, it doesn't say that. Uh, looking under the best Christian you know. No. Uh, looking unto Jesus, amen? amen? The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, Jesus did live on this earth, 33 and a half years, never committed sin one time, constantly did the will of the Father, and rose again in victory, amen? Don't quit because Jesus didn't quit. He didn't quit in school. He didn't quit as a carpenter. He didn't quit at Calvary. He did the will of the Father. Do you think Jesus wanted to become sin for us? No. The Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 30, I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. Hey, do you like everything that's happening in your life right now? No, you don't. How about doing the will of the Father? And then number three, don't quit because not only does Jesus, the living word, abide in you, but you have the written word of God in your hand. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 8 and 9. The Bible talks to Jeremiah, and he tells him, Jeremiah, the people, they're not going to listen to you. So as we look at Jeremiah, we would say he had an unsuccessful ministry. But, if you look at what God did through Jonah, a known quitter, and then look at Jeremiah, we would say, wait a minute, God must be confused. No, he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing in your life. Ma'am, don't be so critical. Sir, you don't know everything. Let's just follow God and stay with Him. At any moment, the trumpet could blow, amen? And we'll be out of this place, and we'll be in eternity with uh, God, and we'll be with our older brother, Jesus Christ. So keep your eyes on Him. Don't entertain thoughts of quitting. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit because it's not going to help you at all in your spiritual life. Don't be a quitter like Jonah because you didn't get what you want. That's the way life goes. But listen, we serve a God that cares about you as an individual. And we have the written Word of God in our hand. We know how this thing ends up. So don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. No de has, tu no de has, tu no de has, tu no de has. You Spanish people don't quit on God. Listen, we, we've been given a great opportunity. We have a church right here where the people love you, and you can join in and serve. Don't let one little thing make you quit. You say, well, Brother Yoder, it is not a small thing compared to what? Again, you're judging things by yourself. You need to go by what God knows. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you.
that you didn't quit on us. Why you would do what you did on Calvary for us, I have no idea, but I am so thankful that you did. Lord, at times we get discouraged. At times we take our eyes off of you. At times we are overwhelmed with the sicknesses of life and the heartaches. But I pray, Lord, that we'd be encouraged from your word. With, your, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, how many would say, Brother Yoder, you talked a lot about going to heaven. And I'd like to go someday. But I'm not really sure that I am going. Would you pray for me? so that I could be sure I'm going to heaven someday? If that's you and you'd like me to pray for you, would you raise your hand? Anyone in the building tonight? Amen, there's one hand. Okay, you can put your hand down. How many would be honest tonight and say, Brother Yoder, as you were preaching about quitting, I gotta be honest tonight. At times, I've entertained thoughts of quitting. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Hands all over the building. You can put your hands down. Lord, I, I don't know why specifically you had me preach this message tonight, but I do know that all temptation is common to man. And I pray, Lord, that for those that needed it tonight, that it would be strength to them, and those that are yet to face what I just preached about, that they would be prepared for the days to come. Please help us to do what we need to. If there needs to be commitments made, they'd come to the altar and make them. If anyone is still not sure whether they're saved, they'd come forward and get that taken care of before it's eternally too late. We want to tell you that we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we stand in the building and she plays. Maybe you just want to come forward and pray. Tell God, thank you, Jesus, for not quitting on me. And I'm not going to quit on you. I don't know everything, but as you reveal things in my life, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stay by the stuff. I know my Lord expects the best from me. How many are the lost so I have lifted? People get discouraged. How many are the chained I've helped to free? But don't let that get to you. That's what it's I meant to do. have I done my best for Jesus? Since he has done so much for me, the hours that I have wasted are so many. The what a wonderful thing to know we have an individual God that cares about, about us as individuals. We don't serve a group of God. We serve one God, a holy God, Jesus Christ, God Almighty. How many and he gave of himself that I have for lifted. Do you How care at all? Many are the chains I've helped to free. Please continue to pray. I wonder have I done my best for Jesus since he has done so much for me. I wonder if July 23rd of 2018, this same group will be here plus more, or will we still be the same size because those that we have gained, we lost just as many for quitting on God. What a sad thought, but it happens all the time. Please, don't let it be you.
I wonder, have I cared enough for others, or have I let them die alone? I might have helped a wanderer to the Savior, the seed of precious life I might have sown. No longer will I stay within the valley. I'll climb to mountain heights above. The world is dying now for want of someone to tell them of the Savior's matchless love. How many are the souls that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus since he has done so much Amen. for me? Don't quit. Don't quit. Let's sing that chorus together. How many are the souls that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus since he has done so much for me? Amen. Not doing our best does not include quitting. Amen. That was great. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for just being so good, being a good God who uh, has never quit on us and so therefore we have no reason to quit on you god i pray that as we continue <clears throat> through this week that we would ponder these things uh, we may have uh, difficult uh, trials we may have uh, poor health we may have you know, difficult times at home or at work or wherever it might be but lord we we're so grateful that um we know that you're always there, and uh, because of that, we will not quit. Lord, I pray that uh, you would be with us through the remainder of this week. Thank you so much for just a great day, great messages. Lord, just a sweet spirit in this place. We thank you and we praise you for all you've done. In Jesus' precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. Well, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for it's a grand thing to be a soldier in this army here below. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's a best thing I know. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>